These wow. are just props they gave us. These. Yeah, it's like Dignation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris. Yeah. We should introduce ourselves. Uh, this is a uh, hi. We're uh, let's uh, test it. Uh, there hey. we are. There's us. I can uh, do the thing again when I. It's us. Um, I'm Dave Rupert. Uh, I'm from Austin, Texas. I work at a company called, <laughs> called Paravel. We're a three-person web design shop, right? And uh, yeah. Oh, you're doing like official intro. Well, I just That's thought. That's you really do. So, we're, so I guess if you, who's listened to the Shop Talk show before? Yes, okay. <laughs> Who is never? Who's a first timer? Welcome. I apologize. Uh, we're at like episode 400, and that's like joining like the ninth season of Cheers or whatever. It's like like you're you're like late in the. But so we are like, oh, we should introduce ourselves. But I yeah, guess, we just know, had like a little that. crisis about that. Like, do people like do, does anybody start listening to podcasts that late? All the evidence is yes, they do, which is cool. yeah. That's but good. still, I could see. I wouldn't. I'm not going to start in season nine of Cheers. Like, who's the guy? Who's the drunk at the bar? Yeah, I don't. It's Woody. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he the? Okay. No. <laughs> Anyway, you really okay. do work at an agency. I do. You I work at your buddies, an agency. and you have all kinds of big fancy clients, and it's, it's yeah, yeah. And, and I don't do agency work at all. It's that sounds like a pain in the ass to me. Well, well yeah, I got it. But you work on a, you have a nice. Blog. I have an app, so we we have the yeah, <laughs> and an oh, app. a blog too. I blog and an app and, and an app. All right, and a podcast. Well, so we just we bring those perspectives to the world of making websites and stuff. And lately, it's kind of been the Jamstack show anyway. Yeah, so we're basically going to pivot today to being the Jamstack podcast, <laughs> the Jam jam, it here first. jam show. Cool. Don't we have a, what, what is next here? We're going to do, I feel like, just to get the stage, get a feel for the audience, where you're at on things, do a little Yeah, poll. we have a very important question that, like, everyone has to answer before we get going. So we'll, we'll get that out of the way, right? So question, quokkas or possums? <laughs> Okay, whoever's voting for Quokkas, please vote for Quokkas. Yes, okay. All right, yeah, noise is help on an audio podcast. That's great. Uh, who votes for possums? Yes. <laughs> oh, strong energy. Yes, strong energy. That's good. That's, a, that's good. That's a wash. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, who, who added those uh, logos? That's a, what a despicable person. I think Quokkas won somehow. Uh, Hey. Okay, but the meat, yeah, I mean, what we normally do on the show is we, sometimes we have guests on and interview them, but in the early days, and in fact, we still get questions like this sometimes, which is awesome to me. The show is modeled after Car Talk, like the, yeah. the most click popular show of all time kind of thing. We're like click and tap. But our logo has a get wrench it. on it. So once in a while, we get emails that are like, how do you change the oil in my like 1978 Pinto, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and we, we answer. Unfortunately, yeah, just tell them. <laughs> so we're like... Well, it's your uh, yeah. roto. Let me Google that cup. For you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but we yeah. you know, we have a bunch of questions that some of which you did for us, some we got on Twitter, some you know just we collected them throughout the thing. Re definitely real people asked all these questions. Yeah. So these are from real, actual people, and so the first question is from. Oh, this is a real one. Oh, uh, not not that there's any fake ones. This is a real one. Yeah, this is a real one. David Darns. Uh, Read it out loud for the because yeah. this is a we're gonna publish this. Here, a real audio podcast. We'll, we'll do an audio. So David Darns writes in, friend of the show, longtime listener. Uh, time travel scenario: you travel back 11 years and have to explain Jamstack to your former self. How would your former self react? And David picked 11 years because that's like the first commit to Jekyll was like 11 years ago. Oh, really? So yeah. Oh, that's a wild card. So 11 years ago, let's flash back to 2008. I'd be like, so you know movable type. It's just that. <laughs> what? <laughs> movable type is back? That's amazing. I could use it on my flashlight? Like you just spin up a local MySQL database, run a Perl script over it, and it barfs out some crap, and you throw it on your uh, FTP it up. F oh, man. FTP Do I have to know up. Perl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, P-E-A-R-L. Oh, it's the new. No. It's the new. Um, this is interesting. I mean, back, like, we were talking about, you know, like, Flash was really popular in 2008 still. Like, yeah. Steve Jobs hadn't killed it yet. And um, <laughs> it Mandy was, tried to convince us Flash was the original <laughs> Jamstack. Yeah, Mandy was like, Flash is Jamstack. And I was like, she's not wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, you did have to, like, pre-rendered. 
pre-render, uh, it came down in a big giant bundle just like every other Jamstack site, so. Uh, uh, not wrong. Not wrong. So yeah. we made some missteps, but here we are 11 years later. No, it's funny, because like, like something like, if, as long as we're reminiscing about old crap, yeah. GeoCities probably wasn't, right? Because it had, th weirdly enough, it had dynamic data, you know, comments and stuff that probably wasn't pre-rendered, probably no, not. No. But like I was looking around, at, oh, so GeoCities long dead, you know, but everybody remembers that. There's another site though, NeoCities, that I was looking at, looks really cool. Yeah. I had just weirdly never seen it before, it's totally jam stack. Really? You sign up for it, you just get like an online editor. It like just by default gives you an index.html file and CSS file and stuff. But then you look at their readme and stuff and they're like, we are a CDN backed static file and service. You know, like they're really serious about the tech of it. But all the, uh, the sites people build are like, look at this rabbit, you know? It's like Dancing a king rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's Jamstack. <laughs> anyway, so with the question though, what do you, what, what, I don't know, what is, what, what's your thing? I, I, I mean, I think if I was hearing about it, I would be like, I don't know, man, I really like my Ruby on Rails with the database, so oh, you know, yeah, I think I would. But you're trying to explain it what it what it what it oh, is. Oh, if I'm explaining it to my former you'd, self, you would say I don't like it. I like databases or whatever. Well, that's how I would react. I would just be like, yeah. you should do a high. You your voice is lower. Oh yeah, then. hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I really like Cake PHP. It's really uh, uh, kind of happy here. Uh, <coughs> So that's how I'd probably react. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't be that hard to explain, though, for, like, honestly, right? You'd be like, I don't know. It's what static files. What if you, files, were, you, you know? were like, hey, 2008 person, we use JavaScript a lot. Like, what, what, would, you, <laughs> what would your 2008 person Yeah, self that's think? actually a good point. You'd, You'd be, be like, like, the what? They're like, imagine, like, <laughs> but not even, like, whatever you're picturing is a lot. It's, like, way more than yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Megabytes more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yikes, so, dude. Watch that coming. That's a wild card. Wow. Didn't see that one. All right. All right. Well, okay. I guess you just, I don't know. Okay, next question. Good question. Dave Schmoopert writes in. It sounds like, Dave Schmoopert, are you here? Uh, okay, Dave Schmoopert writes in. Is Jamstack a weird name? <laughs> Probably not Jamstack.com, but yes. just saying, should we rename it? Yes. We should rename it. No, I mean, we can't no. rename it now. They have a conference already. Okay, Look at all these yeah, people. that's true. There's already a conference and people paid money to go to. So. Yeah, it's got legs. Oh, it's got legs. Okay, well, then I... Eh, okay. All right. Here's another real person. <laughs> uh, Hawks Philworth <laughs> writes in, In this industry, we are fatty. Whoa. Whoa, hey. I mean, Rude. I know, yeah, I know I'm overweight, but like, I broke Phil, my elbows. I mean. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you don't have to call it out. Like, yeah, this is middle school. I'm not a fatty. Like, I mean, that might be like a code of conduct violation. We should probably check. But, I mean, I don't know. Okay. So, is this Jamstack thing a fad? Just a fad. Oh, okay. Oh. Fad. Fad. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. It's British. Um, <laughs> and does it matter if it is? So, is Jamstack a fad? Chris. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, come on. I mean, everything's a fad, right? Phil said it's a fad, kinda. And the, but did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he called us fatty. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so I, I mean, so if I understand what you're saying, you think it's a fad? Not that it's, it's gonna go fad. away. The okay. name might be might we might stop talking about it that way because it's it's a pretty loose connection of stuff already yeah it's a little bit like it's it's static hosting which is like my favorite part of it and then like other good ideas sprinkled on top and like if it's that wishy-washy kind of already to me a little bit maybe that over time the best practices and the services will stick around and all the good ideas will stick around but maybe we won't talk about it in the same way that's the part i expect to kind of fade over time no, that makes sense. I, I, I like that Jamstack, it, regardless of the name, I like that it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like an umbrella term of sorts for like like this these technologies we're all exploring and using. So yeah, it seems like it could stay and at least until some somebody IPOs, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> everyone's kind of banking on that. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, there's, I mean, everything comes and goes. I mean, this conference is smoking hot right now. I mean, there's, you know, it's not like there's 5,000 people here or whatever, but th what there was here is like a lot of representatives of really like good on fire companies right now. Right. Sent their A team to this thing. Not the chumps. They sent like. Yeah. The, the, the king of Burger King came <laughs> to this conference. The, the bur actual Burger King came here. That's right. And gave everyone yeah. Popeye's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just incredible. Yeah. Like, I can't believe that. And so, I like, know. I know. It's not just, you know, we sent the. Uh, Mr. Horton himself. Came. Yeah, Mr. Horton. <laughs> Where was Mr. Horton this morning? I, did, I missed his booth. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, what, I mean, you think the name will stick around? Literally three years from now, are we going to be like, Jam stacking it up like it's hot? I hope so. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Well, I hope I'm doing the jam stack. I'm not. Maybe yeah. I, it has a cooler name, but right. You don't think <laughs> we'll regress into like PHP's way again? I mean, not you know, like the, of course, there's all these oh, slices of the web that aren't going anywhere. Wait I, for obviously. Pam stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PHP. It's jam stack with a little PHP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. taken off. As long as you can run PHP on the edge, we'll, everybody will be like, oh, good. Yeah. It works. Yeah, yeah. it's serverless. <laughs> <laughs> you get a white page if it breaks. <laughs> it's just beautiful. It's good. Yeah, the error right. handling we haven't figured out yet. Yeah. All right, so all, right all right, all right, all okay. right. Oh, this is a good one. All right, here we go. Dominic Magnifico. Are you here, Dominic? No? This, I, I'm, is this his real last name? That's a, just a power name. It is. Okay. Power move. Uh, how are we feeling about the whole headless insert CMS here coupled with a static site generator like Gatsby or Eleventy? Is that the future? Is that the future that agency work is heading towards? Agency work specifically. That's a agency thing. work specifically. You should just put insert static site generator here too, because that's a whole spectrum. Yeah. I knew this was coming. This is why this morning I, I wrote a blog post about. I guess, whatever, I'm not going to like read you the blog post. No, let's read it. That should make <laughs> 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 there's, a, there's all these like buckets of services uh, and there's a spectrum of them and it, sometimes it does kind of feel like pluck one of these and one of these and one of these and you get a website kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but the, and, but as, I guess the question is like, are, is, are, we, are we for sure going to do this? Is this what we're going to do? Are we going to split them? Are we yeah. going to be like front end and then CMS over here? And, and sprinkle on other stuff over here. We're splitting up responsibilities. I, so I think just I, who's at the agency breakfast fireside chat this morning, that was, so, that was really cool um, because it is, in, in all these e-commerce stuff, like all those talks, like it, it, especially from the Burger King, um, they were, it was really good to see like, like how people are using this in, in real production and client situations. I mean, I think the, the core of this agency question is like how do clients respond to that, you know? Um, I mean, I know my clients, it's, I, I think it's kind of like that WordPress talk. It's like, well, we have a WordPress, so <laughs> you're using that, you know? And so like, you don't get the full like, full Jamstack benefits, you know, or, or decoupled CMS, you know, sometimes you... It was the point that, like, when you work with a client, they dictate the choices? Yeah, sometimes, you know, and, but I like this way where it's like your people are, are, the more of these that show up, and, and I keep coming back to, like, when the responsive web design was blowing up, and there's, like, the Boston Globe, and then every news or agency it was like, yeah, we, we'll do responsive, too. Like, every website was like, yeah, I'll do it. So it's like, when the Burger King goes Jamstack, like, now, like this is cool, like or this seems viable, and it, uh, the the Nike talk uh, made me think like the best way to do it is like in an emergency you roll out a Jamstack, you know, like <laughs> everyone's panicked and only has four weeks to build a website. <laughs> You're like Jamstack, yeah, that's it. So, because <laughs> it takes two weeks to set up a database, you can't, you know, uh, yeah. at least. Yeah. So, oh, there's a lot to. Unpack there. And I mean, you can speak to the agency angle better than I can, but yeah, I don't I'm interested in the like, I don't know. Y yes, I do think this is where we're going. I think there's a lot of us have decided I want to 
build my front end however the hell I want to build my front end and evolve it and have good ideas and like feel freedom over here on the front end. And I like to like pick a CMS that feels like I can, I have some agency there and can pick what works good with my data. And there's a lot, there's a spectrum of stuff there. What language do I want to write it in? Do, do, I, do I care where the data goes, how it's formatted, how it's yeah. modeled? <laughs> yeah. It's written in Nuxt, yeah. <laughs> It's but I, I don't know, I like it. I, I want to be able to evolve those things separately. So yes, I think it's a good idea, c kinda. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that it, not that any part of that is a bad idea, but do I also think it's a good idea to like have products on Earth that are a whole package of stuff that you can b that's the complete answer to the whole thing, and you use that to build the site. Mm. There'll always be value in that. Yeah. But if you're like going in it for the long haul, we're going to build a real thing. It's, it's meant to last. We have teams of people working on it. But that decoupling situation. I, I would say I, I think I want to hear more stories, read more blogs and send those to clients and stuff. Just more people like, I don't know, do it, who did the great decoupling and it worked and it, and it feels good. Okay, you need like, some white papers. Some you need some white papers. Studies, I love posts. handing over my email just to read a blog post, you know, it's like... The, the, That's true, though. Like, maybe we're a little light on, like, super success stories of all this. Yeah, but the, the law, blah, law, law blahs talk, law, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 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 um, that was great. I mean, but because it, it even, like... You know, it, it's like internal agency, right? Like the, the dedicated team solution wasn't really working. I love that talk because that's what matters probably to my clients more than just like we're putting things on the CDN, you know, like they're like, yeah, everything goes on the CDN, you idiot. Like, like, <laughs> like I think what matters to my clients is how we like ship things faster and better and like have less errors or whatever. And so like, the Lobos case study was was really awesome because it was it, it was very like we're, we we actually found out like the the dedicated team thing was weird because everyone kept stepping on each other and so like we went to more of a studio model internal studio model and so like that's cool and that does give me back to those like responsive web design feelings like where it's like okay it's like now the organization is changing to adapt to uh, right. the tech stack or whatever the the challenges and of the tech stack so. I think that's cool. Yeah, you, so. you were saying earlier that like there's like maybe sometimes there's a moment in history yeah. that changes things a little bit. Like there's the Boston Globe moment. By my wife, by the way, led that team. Do you yeah, know that? Miranda. Do that? That's right. Yeah. Anyway, what's up, Miranda? Piece, um, of, piece of history. Little piece of history there. And and so does as Jamstack waiting for its Boston Globe moment, kind of. Possibly, I mean, and maybe the chicken, great chicken sandwich wars of 2019 were, uh, <laughs> were part of that. Part of that. Yeah. I don't know. You know. If Burger King's jam stack, you can be jam. Stack. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, maybe that's okay. it. Maybe. Uh, so, do, what about you know you do agency work? What about the like? Have you heard? I feel like I heard I've heard this thrown out a little bit. I don't know if it's like taking as an acronym or not yet or what, but like AX author. Experience. Author experience, okay. And so that, that's what I picture as agency work more. I know you have like a, a different kind of scope of clients perhaps, but I think a lot of agencies have to, are specifically designing a site in which is they do the nerd bits and then they hand it off to people who have like a marketing team and a content team who, who you know, you're trying to build an experience for them to edit the site that needs to be good and understandable and fast that's and all that stuff. That's a big part of it. And that's I why think. some people pick CMS's classic CMS's because they've proven that they can do that over time, but maybe that's changing and stuff. Do you, you ever have to make AX decisions? We do. I mean, yeah. that's something part of it too, and and it's cool to see these, uh, you know, different CMS's, Contentful, or that for managing your content, or even you get into craft um, stuff like craft has like a, a GraphQL API now and they, they have a cloud thing on the horizon. Like these are cool things. I know our clients are like, they're, they're you know, any, any client you walk into the door to, they're like, oh, we hate our CMS. Ugh, that's why we can't get anything done, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> what is that? Everybody hates their CMS. Everyone hates their CMS. So it's like, I think there's always an opportunity to do a, a better job in the CMS UX, but Sometimes it's our job to not just fill it with crap. I mean, that's part of the problem, right? We do a bad job, but...
Um, I had this unrelated but related slightly thought earlier. Is like I feel like everybody should have a CMS that's like capable of slightly more than you're currently using it for. Oh, okay. you, nev you never want to feel like you've like maxed out your CMS capabilities. Cause I don't know what that means exactly. That's like a showered thought kind of thing. All right. Uh, are we done? With yeah. That? Next. Next one. Yeah. Oh, just Dave Schmupert again. Which talk won? <laughs> All right, everyone just shout out your f the best talk. Ready? Three, two, one, go. The, uh, okay. Uh, a lot of people said variable fonts, but the correct answer was chicken sandwich. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> All right. Sean writes in, uh, Vue, React, and even Angular have uh, got a lot of mention on stage and in the halls, uh, but there's very little discussion about AMP, which has some overlap and some differences with Jamstack. Why do you think this is? Is it politics, AMP's polarizing perception, or technical perceived limitations on what you can do? So why wasn't there much AMP at Jamstack Conf? Because AMP sucks. <laughs> yeah. Because there's like classy, intelligent people here. <laughs> so sorry. Whoa! Whoa! He just let you say anything. It was kind of I know. Fight these jerks. Wow. Um, I well, AMP is a search technology, so <laughs> this is not a search com t conference or a, a SEM. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess technically you have to pre-render it. it. He's got it's kind of a good point, right? Like, isn't AMP a sort it's of web basically pre-rendered? You know, you uh, can't have like an AMP a <laughs> div ID root isn't an AMP. Style, nope, right? nope. So. AMP comes down with some content. I mean, no images show up, but you know, AMP needs to run before images show up. But I'm sure there's plenty of people jam stacking their AMP. Does anyone jam their AMP or AMP their jam? AMP. Jamp. That sounds terrible. Jamp. Jampstack. It is a little weird that nobody mentioned it, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I, maybe we're all just like waiting for it to go away. <laughs> is that is that a safe bet? <laughs> okay. I think everyone yeah, got some agreement there. So <laughs> check. Yeah. Check. All right. <laughs> we. But ser if you want to have a more serious conversation, then we can talk about it later. Um, we run a sizable publishing operation. Uh, this is Clay Anderson, right? We run a sizable publishing operation with lots of subscription content. What I'm struggling to comprehend is how an SSG server-side generated site or static site can be used in such a case. Implementing role-based access, delivering page personal page op uh, page personalizations, and they're uh, like use-based. Like how, how how do you do that with a Jamstack? Like P12N is what it's called in the bit. Yeah, right. So you log in and there's like different stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, you yeah, you don't have to pre-render everything, right? Isn't that? I think feel like even even Hawks Philworth has a good post on on my site hey. about this kind of thing. About I don't know. I think like that's a good spirit of Jamstack is you just pre-render what you can and hit the rest up. But there was you know the all that great stuff about Nuxt was happening too. And Nuxt ha this like is like almost confusing to me. I wonder how many people like totally grok this and don't. I, maybe I'm the only one confused, but Nuxt has like kind of like two modes you can run it in. It can totally pre-render everything basically, universal. right? That's universal? Yeah. Okay, so if it's on Netlify, that's what it's doing because Netlify has, you can't, you're not running node. I mean, I guess you can in a cloud function, right? But generally it's static files happening on it, right? Yeah, or SPA. Yeah, or thing. there can be like node on the server and Nuxt can be like hitting that node server to do server-side rendering. They're like pretty different things to me and, and Nuxt does both. Yeah. Right, but if you have that node server available to you, then it can do stuff like, oh, I see you're logged in. I'm going to cough up the logged in stuff for you. Like it has access to the server, so it can do that. Yeah, and you can also do that all like asynchronously or what, you know, like render the page and then go f fetch the user avatar, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's always my like. Basic it's still example. Jamstack. It's still Jamstack. I remember, like, this is, uh, this is a fascinating Jamstack. Philosophy question to me because I was I don't know was hit up by some Reacty people about this. Like if you have one file on your website, it's index.html. It has a doc type and crap, and then has div id root only one thing. Script file at the bottom, big old content bundle, whatever. It 
explodes down all of React or Vue or something and scaffolds or the whole three. app from there. Some it's an SPA. All three. <laughs> so <laughs> mini micro front yeah. ends? Yeah. 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 That's great tech. Uh, but it bootstraps the whole thing and goes gets content from APIs and builds the whole SPA from one thing. It, but what you host on Netlify is index.html, one file. You host it up there. It's that file is static hosted, and then the, all the entirety of the rest of the experience happens from the execution of that one JavaScript file. Is that Jamstack? Yes. Yes. Weird. Maybe not totally in the spirit of Jamstack, but yes. Yeah, and I mean, I think, like, right, like, best practices would be, like, you... Uh, try to render something. I mean, we had like whole talks on performance or whatever, like try to render as much as you can before blocking the main thread. Yeah, but well, okay, so if it's a React app and that's how you're doing it, maybe throw, maybe do it with Next instead. Yeah. Because then you get all, all the powers of Next, which Chrome is baking into the browser. Did you hear that? Yeah, <laughs> they just put Next in the browser. Yeah. Yeah. They sh it's they great. It. They didn't even pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> What I, I think, what I think Chrome should do is put a Levendy in the browser. Oh, I, it's today I'm announcing I'm uh, I, I'm gonna invest 16 million into a Levendy. Oh, you're, gonna... yeah, <laughs> just one more million than Gatsby. So, <laughs> just want to really, yeah. So, but if somebody else wants to invest 16 million, that's totally cool. I'll let you like, you can have my spot. That's fine. But I'm in. I got stickers. <laughs> And stickers. Uh, oh, I mean, did we get that? Did we get the point of that question right, though. Like, uh, yeah, I uh, mean, I think, I think, like, if you you role-based access and delivering page personalizations that are use-based, right? I mean, so there's dynamic stuff that's happening on this page. Like, Gemstack doesn't say you can't do dynamic stuff. Yeah, it's it kind of says you can and should. And I think from your talk, you were showing how CodePen, you know, you, that's a component, that's a component, that's a component, and you keep building up until the URL is a component. I mean, I happen to know y'all have a Rails backend or whatever, but like, in theory, that right. could all be done from an HTML file on Netlify. I mean, yeah. possibly. I mean, yeah, probably. And we, you know, unfortunately, we don't. We don't do anything. Any, pretty much any statically rendered stuff that hydrates or whatever. Mm -hmm. We want to get there, and it could, you know, it's because like one way to do that is just have all those components in Rails too, and render the whole thing in Rails and have them flop out for React components or whatever. But then you're like writing two code bases, and I was like, no. Yeah, but you know, but then or you pick a next thing, but like next has a very opinionated router, and so does Rails, and then that got weird, and we just haven't gotten there yet, but we'll get yeah, there. Yeah, but eventually it changes. might split apart and be two projects or whatever. So yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Well, that was fun. Did I click it? I think I already clicked. No, I didn't click it. I'm gonna click it. Here you go. Yeah. All right. Thomas Randolph writes in. There's a huge presence of CMS solutions and tools in the Jamstack world like out in the lobby there. Uh, do you think there's room in this space for something game-changing for web application developers? Do the current uh, spate of content-focused tools meet the needs of application devs, or do we need something more suited for apps? Uh, are those two things at odds, i.e. the great divide uh, of <laughs> like within the Jamstack itself, or do are they like two sides of the same coin? So. What, what, uh, yeah, all right. So there's, like, CMS-wise, we have all these CMSs. I mean, that, that is, that, that's the kind of deal. Like, for content things, just look at all the companies trying to help with that. Yeah, there's a lot of solutions, a lot of players. Is there room for more? Well, and then is the presumption that you're using those tools when you're building a content D focused D site, but, right? And then, yeah. like, so there's a proliferation of tools in that space. But cool. what, I guess we may have to do the whole, like, what is the difference between apps or, like, what, like, yeah, what is web apps need? Um, I mean. Are you saying maybe there's not a proliferation of tools on the other side of that, which is web apps, whatever those are? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, so I, I think, like, uh, you know, I, I come back to the work I do, which is mostly, like, client work or whatever, and, like, all of them, like I said, hate their CMS and need a new CMS. So I think like 
like the CMS play is, is good and smart and I'm glad there's a lot of options because I can like go to my clients and stuff and be like, look, there's like 10 options to actually do Jamstack successfully. So um, that's exciting. Um, but for like web apps, I'd be curious like what we need. I, I think like the Netlify build plugins, um, you know, like those are cool because like now you can control more of your build uh, in, in the Netlify. What's the of. difference though? Like if it's not a content -y site, what is it? What's well, an example of an app that there is less tooling for on the Jamstack side of things? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I have trouble. I, one thing I thought of, and this is if somebody wants to pay me $16 million to make this, I can totally do it. Um, but you know, like serverless? <laughs> you know serverless? <laughs> Got it. Yeah. You write a baby, baby node app, and then you hit, it gets a URL, its own URL. How wasteful. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Baby Node app has a whole URL. It doesn't even, it's only 30 lines They're of code. They're not good URLs though. They're garbage. They're bad URLs. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So I hit this weird URL and then it runs within 300 milliseconds or something and then it spits back something, right? Yeah. And then, you know, in, in the number one, you know, you think about like hitting like the Twitter API or whatever, right? Like get, give me my tweets or whatever. And like you get your tweets, but then after you do that, like 50 times, Twitter says, you can't get any more tweets anymore. <laughs> like, you hit the API too much. So like, it, so then you have to write an app or what, some kind of middleware or something to like, like cache that. So like, uh, yeah. I really well, want just remember, to. Just as an aside, just to ruin your story a little bit, you wrote, uh, you made a 3D whale one time. Yeah. And hit this API to get, uh, ad it was like just agile advice and this big fat 3D whale would go, you know, what did it say? Like, you should work hard and <laughs> eat less or something. Yeah, it was, it was, um, uh, and I can then, pull but it up it here. hit an API limit and the whale read out the API message and it was, <laughs> the greatest yeah. moment in one of my life, I think. There, there, there's, yeah, so it's GitHub has this agile advice API. Like it's just stupid, some thing they, somebody made a long time ago. And so this, so I made a 3D whale in like a, a VR scene and you look at the whale, you stare into its soul and it'll dispense agile advice to you. Like done is better than perfect or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and it's just beautiful to me because it's just like I I want to do like morning yoga with this whale like just dispensing advice to me, um, but then when you hit the API limit, it's like 500 internal server error, <laughs> and then like colon, colon. left curly bracket yeah. it was in JSON <laughs> exceeded request five zero nine three yeah and so like okay. anyway so. In this particular use case, this is the best startup idea I've ever had, Agile Whale, um, is <laughs> VR Agile Whale, is uh, the, like, I, I think like the, the ideal situation is like I could hit this API, but then somebody manages the throttling in between. So like, I don't know if that's what you're after, Thomas. Um, you can pay me for that uh, idea. But um, like, I think there's like things like that, like, like there's rough points or what, the one graph, I mean, that, that talk, that was crazy. Awesome. I mean, like, click, 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 click. Now I can, like, text to domain, you know? Like, that's with the Netlify and uh, everything. Yeah, that felt pretty appy and not content-y. Yeah. yeah. And so I think, like, some of those, like, easing pain points would be pretty cool for uh, just, you know. Yeah. Well, that's a good example of some tooling that's happening in that market. But it's true that there's a lot more booths out there that are content focused and our app focused in a way. But I, I think to me, like th maybe those problems were actually almost solved first. Like in an, so if something that's app like is like, I don't know, like a kayak.com or whatever, like something that you log in, there's auth and you have a user account and then like dashboardy stuff and search and real time data with results and stuff like that. Oh, That's cool. appy, you know? Yeah. And some of those apps like th th that need was solved before we had Jamstack. There's like Firebase and cloud functions came along and, and micro made microservice type of stuff easier to deal with. And I think there already is a lot of good solutions for that. Like, the, you know, have you ever seen those slides, those Jamstack slides that are like, look at the Jamstack eco 
ecosystem. Oh, yeah. You, you know, there's Algolia and, and, you know, Twilio and all these services that, like, sprinkle on together to make something. That's the app ecosphere. That's kind of already exists, you know? If you're building something app-like, you kind of, all, all those services are, are ripe for the picking. I get, yeah, like, anything with an API fits in the A yeah. bucket, right? Oh, sure. So, that's I mean, the A of Jamstack. There you go. And there you go. I mean, that's good, but, well... Yeah, I don't even know if there's any questions. Any questions? Is this a, does that make sense? Did we answer that one? Okay. All right. Well, I think, uh, or where are we doing? We got five minutes. Chris, you got anything else? Let's just, you know, say thanks we for one say thing. Thanks. Um, um, it's a, it is, uh, you know, it's striking to me. I, I said to somebody earlier that the, the coolness of this is, is kind of a big deal to me. Like, it feels pretty special to be here. I know it's not the first ever Gemstack Comp, but they keep getting cooler in a way. And I, some of my favorite conferences I've ever been to throughout my, you know, whatever, medium-length history in web were the focused ones, where they were, it, was, it was highly topical. And yeah. I remember so I went to some of the, uh, the earliest jQuery comps. Yeah. Believe it or not, they had conferences. Not, not all of you remember jQuery. You have to be a... <laughs> <laughs> Only 90s kids remember jQuery. Yeah. yeah. But there was like a hot spirit at those things of like, we are yeah. on the edge, yo. This is we, cool. We got something in common. And that same kind of vibe is happening here. And like I said, there was, I was not joking around about the coolness of the companies out there, sending their A team. You know, all these companies are on fire. We're on the edge of something big, it feels like. This isn't just like a weird one-off thing on the web. Like, this is happening, yo. Yeah. It's happening. I agree. I, I'm getting like cool vibes from like, and I have no stake in it either. I don't care. Well, I do. I, I mean, I fly million like million the web or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I better get a return, you know what I'm saying? But Yeah, right. But no, I, it's such a good, like, I don't know, a, like atmosphere here. I mean, people in, in, like, the breadth of people. I mean, we talk, like, front of the front end, back of the front end. Like, you, there's a big breadth of people here. And through diversity, we get, like, better opinions and better technology. And so I think that's good, and, and I think we need to maintain that without making enemies. <laughs> Oops. That was one of the things that makes it, like when you pick like five companies to host your website instead of some monolith thing, you've like five x the possibility, uh, you know, or five x the number of CEOs that might tweet something racist, you know? That yeah. You have, uh, <laughs> uh, you gotta be careful gotta out there. Go, yeah. At least when you pick WordPress, you, you got Matt Mullen, <laughs> like, like the guy is, fine you know yeah i can't promise that, but he's very calm he's very chill <laughs> <laughs> almost like well so are these chill, netlify guys super yeah chill yeah so i think we're i think we're all good here and in good hands so i guess a special thanks to netlify just because they're really at the heart of this you know they paid the bill for most of this yeah, <laughs> cool thanks yeah yeah uh, uh that's a big deal and phil works there our glorious mc did a great yeah, job so you, hey phil. thanks so much phil and the rest of the netlify gang and volunteers and sponsors and everybody i think phil's yeah. got a lot of people to thank too but i want to thank them and phil can't get up here and thank netlify because that'd be weird so well yeah. i'll thank netlify god dang it thanks you Thank Netlify. All right. And I want to thank you, dear listener, for uh, tuning in, sitting here for this whole entire podcast. And if you're listening on the audio track, thank you for downloading this in your podcast of choice. Be sure to start heart favorite up. That's how people find out about the show. Follow us on Twitter at Shop Talk Show for tens of tweets a month. Uh, and if you hate your job, head over to shoptalkshow.com slash jobs and get a brand new one because people want to hire people like you. And Chris, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Shoptalkshow.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you.